Hello again, and welcome back to the Three Sisters Beds at Hampton Lake Homestead. Have you ever grown tall, beautiful corn like this, only to watch it get knocked over during a storm so that it ends up on the ground? I've had it happen to me more times than I care to remember. Traditionally, I've used hipping, which is a process where soil is pulled up around the base of top-heavy plants in order to stabilize it to keep plants like this from falling over. Several years ago, I was talking with my wife about my concerns about having more of my corn fall over, and she suggested that I stake it. My response to her was that that wouldn't be practical because I would have to put a stake at each corn plant and a tall, heavy one at that, which wouldn't be practical and would be too expensive and time consuming. Later, I was thinking about her suggestion though, and I remembered a process called a Florida weave. With the Florida weave, a stake is placed at either end of the row and then string is woven in between the plants so that the string and the posts at either end of the bed hold them up. I tried it that year with very good results and I've done it every year since then with corn and other top heavy plants. Today I'm going to be doing a Florida weave on this corn and also to a few of the Rama tomato plants that I've already planted. So I'd like to show you how I do it. Let's get started. I'm going to explain this with a graph that shows a bird's eye view of a single row of a growing bed. The posts are placed at either end of the row. A string is tied to one of the posts at the desired height. Today I will only do one weave at around two feet high and will do another when the corn is taller. The string is then passed through the plants passing to the right of one plant and then alternating to the left of the next consecutive plant and the string is weaved through the plants in succession. At the stake at the other end, the string is tied to the stake. Then starting over again from the stake at the far end of the bed, the string is passed through again, this time on the opposite side of the plant, resulting in figure eights throughout the row. By having pressure on either side, the plants are held upright. Once the second weave is done, the corn will have two points of contact that keep it sturdy and will prohibit it from falling. By using a post driver, the post is just driven down into the ground, trying to keep it as straight as possible. And then the same thing is done at the other end of the bed. To do this first weave, I'm gonna start about two feet high. Once the corn has grown a little bit, I'll do another one about four feet high so that it will have two points of contact to stabilize it. I'm only using this baling string, which is inexpensive it's not real strong, but it doesn't have to be. Most any string will work. After tying it into a square knot, I'll start on the right side of the first plant, and then on the second plant, go to the left side and zigzag back and forth throughout this row. And now I've made it down to the other end of the row. In order to be able to cinch this up tightly, what I will do is come about two feet away from the post or so and just tie a single loop. Just like that. Then after pulling the string so that it's fairly tight, I then pass the string through this loop that I just made, like that. And then by pulling on this loose end, I'm able to pull it a little bit tighter. It's not critical that this string be extremely tight, but you want it snug so that the plants don't have much leeway for movement. Then, once it's at the desired tightness, a slip knot can be placed in it, just like this. And this is what the string, the first string that's been woven through the corn looks like. You'll see it one side facing me, the other side facing the other side of the row. Notice about the level of tightness that I get it. It's tight but not bowstring tight. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. And here is what it looks like when it's finished. As you can see, there are strands of string on each side of each of the plants, which help to hold it upright. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the rest of the rows and to some of the tomatoes that I mentioned earlier. Now I'm also gonna do the same thing with these Rama tomatoes. And in this case, I've already put down bamboo stakes that are fairly sturdy, but I don't trust them by themselves to be sturdy enough once these 
plants start bearing a lot of fruit. I'm afraid that they will get too top heavy. Now some people do this without using the bamboo stakes. They will simply stake the plant, the tomato plant, the same way that I just did the corn. And that can be done as well. All right, and I've also finished staking the tomato plants. You see how the weaving them in this way gets them nice and straight. And I did want to show here on this middle row, sometimes you will get some gaps. So what I'm going to do now is come behind and tie a piece here and a piece here, which will help give strength to this. And it will also give it additional support so that it won't move from side to side or laterally as well. So now the difference with this tied up can be seen. This is even sturdier and it makes these lines a whole lot straighter. So those are the basic steps for doing a Florida weave. It's very simple and it can be used for basically any plant that needs to be staked. Now, obviously it's not absolutely critical to stake corn. I just like to do it because as I've mentioned, we get a lot of big storms here in Louisiana and it's nice to have the peace of mind that the corn will likely stay upright even during a major storm. Now I would also like to mention that it's late May, which for us here in Louisiana means that spring is pretty much over. So before I leave you today, I'm gonna to leave you with a few images from the spring of 2021. Thanks again for watching. Mm -hmm.